my next Mr. and Mrs. come up, keep in mind now Mr. McWilliams is going to be in quite a pinch. So as my Mr. and Mrs. McWilliams come up with their books ready to go, let's look at page 92. So we're going to start reading on page 92, three lines up from the bottom in the second column where we see lightning, lightning. She is trying desperately to save her husband's life. Okay, Mrs. McWilliams. Lightning, lightning, lightning. Ah, here it is. It says the safest thing is to stand on a chair in the middle of the room, Mortimer, and the legs of the chair must be insulated with non-conductors. That is, you must set the legs of the chair in glass tumblers. Now, we, we do have some props, but it's not safe for Kenny to be on a chair, so Kenny, you're on a stool. Let's use our imaginations. All right. Okay, Kenny, would you hold this so we can move it up so we can hear you pull? Okay, there we go. All right, Mr. McWilliams, ask your question. Shall I get two chairs, Evangeline? One for each of us? Certainly not. I'm going back into the closet just as soon as I'm sure you're out of danger. Yes, because she wants her husband safe, but she feels like she's just fine the way she is. Let's look at the next page. Now, Mrs. McWilliams, she wants desperately to save her husband's life. She is horrified of the storm. We know everything under the sun causes lightning. And... What she got him to do? Look at the fourth tagline. Mrs. McWilliams, yes, that must be it. Yes, that must be it. It stands to reason that it is. They're in the nature of lightning rods, you know. Put on your fireman's helmet, Mortimer. That is mostly metal. And she's got to grab the fireman's helmet because we need you to be safe, Mortimer. Okay. Here's there. Do you feel safer already? Extreme. Okay. Uh, I keep on reading. I'll feel a bit... I feel a bit silly, Evangeline, wearing my helmet and a nightshirt, you know? About halfway through the page. I'll read until you find it. I suppose you'd prefer the alternative. Having all of us struck by lightning? <laughs> no, 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 my dear. Nothing of that sort. See? I've put it on. Somehow I don't think it's quite enough metal. Mortimer, I know. Oh, oh Evangeline. Here we go. Not my malicious saber. I keep on reading, don't I? It's so hot in here. <laughs> There's your answer, Mortimer. Put it on at once. <laughs> it's hard to read and get props, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very well, Evangeline. Very well, Evangeline, if it'll make you happy. Now, Mortimer, I think you need some way to protect your feet. I know. Oh, what's she gonna get this time? Okay, Mortimer, don't don't let that fall. If you do, you're uh, it, there. You go. Okay, let's put the boots on, Mortimer, so you are safe. Okay, Mortimer, get the boots on. Oh, and the <laughs> socks. The so that's the best part. He's feeling very safe now. Do you feel safe? Extremely. Very uh -huh. safe. Okay, let's get those boots on and get back up in your position before the lightning completely strikes. Oh, oh, we're are we gonna make it? Hop up on your chair. The lightning's coming! Okay, we made it! All right, whoa, oh, oh, oh. There we go. Okay, help us on, we're good. Now we see, won't the spurs damage the finish right there at the bottom of that first column? Won't the spurs damage the finish on the chair? <laughs> Never mind that. They're metal and they'll help protect you from the lightning. Oh, now Mrs. McWilliams has another idea. Mrs. McWilliams, look at 93, the second time you speak. Never mind that, Mortimer. Never mind that, Mortimer. Don't waste precious time and talk. Get that large dinner bell. Oh, go get the dinner bell. Because he's got to be safe, we need enough metal. So we've got a hat, sword, and now the bell. Oh, that's enough bell, Mortimer. <laughs> As he's ringing the bell... As, he, ooh, as he's reading the bell, two of his friends walk in, Mr. Appleby and Mr. Baxter, a third person, Mr. Carter, come in, and let's just get a, a visual of what they see. They see Mortimer with his hat, his bell, his bell, his sword, his boots, and they look at him as if maybe he's, well, he's different, I'd say. Look at the bottom, it says, what in the nation is the matter here? And can you imagine what they're thinking? Let's turn the page. They look at him, and he's proclaiming that there's a thunderstorm, and they say there's no thunderstorm. What was causing all the sound, Samantha? A celebration. Yes, they're celebrating the election. The election has just taken place. Cannons are going off. 
And look at what's said in the second column. You'll have to forgive my husband. Mrs. McWilliams, first time to speak on page 94. You'll have to forgive my husband, gentlemen. I told him there was probably nothing to worry about. But you know how some men are when it comes to thunder and lightning, as frightened as children. Yes, and we all know it was definitely him. He was the one that was frightened. Now, she knew that Garfield won. How did she know? Read the last line, Mrs. McWilliams. It was an absolute certainty that Garfield should win. You've seen for yourselves what my husband is like, and he voted for Mr. Hancock. Oh, poor Mr. Mortimer. <laughs> Go ahead and have a seat. Excellent job. Now, we have had, can you take the microphone with you, Mr. McWilliams? I'll take that bell before we hear it again. <laughs> As they're taking the microphones, we see in our um, homework assignment.